Come on over. Look at this amazing animal. Obviously, no humping. Uh -oh. Must be learning from Brillo, the armadillo, that's for sure. But of course, we have a capybara. And you guys have heard that this is the largest rodent on the planet. Also, are aquatic. They love to swim. That's why they have little web feet. And you know, we've never tried to actually have Hobby swim. So today, I think we're gonna find a spot and maybe give him a little swimming lesson. Again, you can see those little web feet that they have that they actually swim, so they're really adept swimmers. In his enclosure that we're gonna build across the street, there'll be an area where he can go swimming. It's gonna be really cool. So let's just go ahead and see which enclosure we're gonna do. I'm thinking, uh, probably not a good idea with the anaconda, so uh, let's go across over to the Reptarium and find out. And of course, Hobby's actually gonna be rooming with Matilda when they actually are across the street in a giant enclosure where Matilda will have a little water feature that's a little bit more shallow, and then Hobby will have a big, deeper water feature that it can actually swim in. I think the only option that we really have here is to do Bowser's Pond. Man, he is getting heavy. Think about getting heavy. What do you say that after we get a little swim session with Hobby, you go ahead and weigh Bowser and see how much he weighs. Okay. What was he last time, 85 pounds? 85, 95, something like that. Something like that. I think he's bigger now. Me too. Well, Lori's making fun of me because the water is cold. I'm a little baby. I have Lori grab me Hobby. You want to grab Hobby and see if he wants to I have no idea what's going to happen. He's either going to absolutely love the swimming or he's going to hate it. We don't know yet. So let's go ahead and just see what happens. I think he's going to poop. <laughs> he's probably going to poop. Hobby. Oh, such a good boy. Do you want to try to swim? Do you want to try to swim? Oh, no, he's swimming. I got Hobby. Like it. Oh my god, I love this. Oh, he went underwater. He's underwater. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how wild that is. What do you think, Lori? Are you surprised? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I guess I knew they did, but I've never seen it before, so this is pretty cool. He's literally diving to the bottom of the water. Right to the bottom. <laughs> I'm blown oh away. my god, I did not expect this at all. You can definitely tell these guys are adapt swimmers. I mean, he is just absolutely loving it. When I was down in Texas at SeaQuest, we actually had a giant big happy, just 150 pounds, and we went swimming actually in the stingray tank. I don't know that we'll be taking Javi in our stingray tank, but again, he's gonna have an area he's gonna swim. He loves it. It has to be something we're gonna have to do for enrichment for him, probably like once a week or something like that. This is perfect for him. So in his enclosure, there'll be a water basin that's about this size, about this deep, maybe even a little bit deeper than this, so he can enjoy swimming all the time whenever he wants. That's incredible. The thing I'm really surprised about is he hasn't pooped yet, which is really crazy. Don't jinx it. I mean, but isn't that crazy? I mean, he loves it. I didn't expect him to dive so much and swim underwater like this. It's crazy. This is an airy hippo. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, who wants to get wet and take them? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I think he absolutely loved it. That was a major success. I mean, how cool is that? And the enrichment is amazing. I mean, he has to have a really cool enclosure that has a swim thing because he loves to swim. That was freaking epic. Hey! Jay, guess what we just did? What did you do? Javi went swimming in Bowser's Pond. Why didn't you like, call me? Because I just called you. Can you go put him back in Bowser's Pond so I can see him? No. What's your guess? He's got to be 100 now. What do you think? I think he's 95. No way, bro. Right. He's so up. heavy. Yeah. 95 pounds, that's what I think. <sighs> yes! Oh, he's, he's like, yes! On the dot, dude. On the dot, 100.5 pounds. Bowser finally broke the 100 pound mark. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Now, you got to remember, these guys can get up to 200 pounds. Although, I think the biggest one I've ever seen has been about 150 pounds. You know, he's still got a long way to go. He's still young. He's only in his 40s. He so, another 150 years and certainly going to be putting on weight. It's crazy. When we got him, he was 45 pounds about five years ago. So, he's doubled his size in five years. In another five years? No, maybe he will be 150 pounds. <laughs> no, I can't pick him up that way. Okay, Bowser's going. <laughs> it might be lift Bowser is going back over. Thanks, Bowser, for letting us use your pond to have Hobby do it. We're going to have to do this mic up. You're going to have to pull Bowser out at least once a week so we can have Hobby swim around. You want to talk to him about that? <laughs> <laughs> He's only getting bigger. He's heavy. Connie, what are you doing? Are you doing the can can? I. 
What, what? I don't know. What, what? I'm cleaning the tortoise pen, deep cleaning, because it is dirt hay. It's so dusty, it's a war zone. It's like the Sahara Desert in here, man. I can't even see straight. I probably won't be able to breathe normal for the rest of the day. You guys know that I've been working with reptiles for 35 years and I could not have imagined a handful of things. Well, to be honest with you, I couldn't imagine a ton of things 35 years ago. Those dream animals that you're like, oh my God. And I think back to the piebald ball python that really was imported back in the 60s or 70s. I think the original one, it was never bred. It wasn't actually bred, I think, until the early 90s, if I'm not mistaken. And the piebald ball pythons really changed the industry amazingly with just amazing animals. And you thought, like, what would a pied retic look like? What would a pied berm look like? What would a pied whatever look like because they're just so amazing and then you fast forward all these years and i never thought that i would own an animal like neo here the motley golden child pied reticulated python look at the color and pattern on this animal i've often said i think it's the most striking snakes that i have right now as far as looks go i just think it's amazing and as it gets bigger it's going to get better but again pied reticulated pythons amazing and of course neo kind of fits in the matrix theme right when we named neo and then got the pied burmese python we thought well, neo from the matrix i'm a huge fan of the matrix we thought why not go trinity for the pied burmese python right and look at how amazing that animal and of is. course it's now shed out remember it kind of had a weird shed in the beginning where it didn't shed that egg shed off well now it's eating really well and it's shedding it i think what's interesting is look at this almost like a xanthic -y piece right here right beneath the neck there's almost like a silvery pattern to just it just an absolutely ripper of a snake and again one of those things that when i was in burmese pythons when i was young i mean that's what started the entire thing with bhb reptiles burmese pythons i could only have dreamed that there was a pied and i remember seeing the first pied burmese python years ago and being absolutely smoked never thinking that I would actually own one one day. So uh, Trinity is doing amazing. And of course, when my buddy over in Dubai surprised me with buying an albino pied Burmese python, I was absolutely blown away. And look at that animal. Now and that's the thing about berms, you know, when they're babies, they can be a little bit hyper, you know, they like to bite a little bit and stuff like that. You can see it happening and so like that. We're sticking with the Matrix theme and this is actually named Switch. That's right, that's the other female in the Matrix, you guys. If you haven't watched, you may you know, watch it. It's a great series. I will say the last Matrix, not that good, but let's not get into movie reviews. Look at how beautiful albino pied burmese python looks i mean switch is an absolute ripper she's eating like crazy she's shed out she looks absolutely wonderful it's really great to have that three like mount rushmore animals to me right you know, you've got neo you've got switch and then of course you have trinity what incredible animals i can't believe i own them i'm still kind of like on cloud nine that i actually have this would have been a dream i never thought was even possible when i started and i tell you what they are incredible do you guys remember the little monitor? The little Doomerals monitor? He's always such a pain in the butt to find. I'm gonna just try to find him and show you guys him because you haven't seen him in a while. Oh, easily, oh, easily. Is it Barry the Platypus? No, it's not Barry the Platypus. It's Weasley, the little Doomerose monitor. Oh my goodness, you're getting so big. This guy, obviously we don't film with him a whole lot because he is such a pain in the butt to find. Because he is so little. He is. <laughs> Freaking cute. No, Weasley, you can't run, buddy. He's been doing great. He's been eating so well. You can see he's actually starting to lose that orange on his head. Now it's becoming more of a brown color, which really kind of sucks. I really wish he really kept it like bright red orange head. You know what? It's all right, because he's still adorable. So now we just got to keep working with him, but it's such a pain in the butt to find him, and I always feel bad for destroying this enclosure. The last two times when we filmed that we've had to destroy but it. But it's funny, though, because we sit here at this table to eat lunch sometimes, and he always seems to come out around lunchtime, and he'll go for a little swim, and he'll just kind of like want to eat our food kind of looking. So it's almost like he's begging for food like a dog which is adorable he's got some nice body weight to him so freaking cute and he's doing so much better with him which is weird because we really ah. and he's doing so much better with the handle mm -hmm. anyways can't do that buddy you're gonna hurt yourself like his head is like half the size of my thumb we will definitely keep you guys updated on probably him. within a couple months so i don't have to try to find him again so that way he'll come out by himself whenever i call his name right weasley you gotta say it like that though Mr. Wee. Remember that Super Lori Leopard that was bred to the Cine Lesser animal? That we caught the clutch a few days back? Well, they've now hatched out, and there's some beautiful animals Everything's going to be a Lori ball python, right? Because it's a Super Lori Leopard. This is actually a Lori Lesser ball python. And then when you add the leopard to that, this is a Lori Leopard Lesser. Look at how incredible it is. Look at the striping on it. Absolutely wonderful animal. And then, of course, this is a really pretty animal here. This is actually just a Lori Leopard, but it's one that has a stripe all the way down its back. I've never really seen one like that before. It's really 
really beautiful. But this is the animal. Remember when I cut, I was like, I don't even know what this is. Look at that animal right there. It's silver. It's got this stripe down its back. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This is a Lori Lesser leopard. So what is this? Why is there a gray animal that hatched out? Like I said, when I've been combining this pair together, we've been getting some crazy results. I can't wait to hold on to these again, raise these up, do some more breeding, try to find out what's going on. There's probably something allelic going on there within the lesser gene, maybe possibly the cine gene, probably not because we've done a lot with cine and Lori before. But there's probably an allelic trait that's going on. That's just causing some really crazy stuff. And this one even has a little white pied ringer on it. Absolutely crazy. Just blown away with the results of last year's clutch. And now blown away with the results of this year's clutch. The paper towel. Oh, so exciting. We got a new paper towel. All right, guys. Now that we did a little update with Weasley, I guess I have to put his enclosure back together. We should probably do that. Oh, Mr. Weasley. Last but not least. How does, how does Chandler do it? Ah, nothing. Nothing but the best of the freshest, the cleanest to want. Mr. Weasley. There you go, buddy. You had a nice, fresh little hot tub. Wax. Like brand new. Hi, right, Weasley. I'll see you at lunchtime, buddy. So much really clean this mess up. Well, that was absolutely amazing, wasn't it? It's so cool to see Javi swim. That was just a highlight of my week. There's no doubt about that. And maybe we'll even put like a viewing panel in the enclosure so that you can see him underwater or something like that. We hadn't thought about that, but after seeing today, I thought, wow, that might be something that might be really cool. Just look at this cute little monkey right here. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you do, do me a favor, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe as always. We'll definitely see you in the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember. Are you swimming too? Yeah. Well, I'm not swimming, but I'd be in there. He's swimming. <laughs> okay. <laughs>